Hey YouTubers and welcome back to my YouTube channel Master That English where we understand, analyze and interpret the important texts and concepts that may be part of your English curriculum. Our topic for today is another periodical essay by Joseph Edison and this one is essay number 124. So get your pens and notepads ready because here we go. As discussed in the previous lecture, The Spectator was a joint endeavour of Richard Steele and Joseph Edison. However, even though they worked together, they had distinctly different styles. Where Richard Steele can be called a man of experience, who had a lot of emotional intensity in his work. He was renowned for a popular prose style in drama called sentimental comedies. One of his famous work in this genre is The Conscious Lovers. Now, what is a sentimental comedy? Sentimental comedies are those comedies that have extreme characters, where evil is portrayed by the bad characters and the virtue by the noble characters. The primary aim of a sentimental comedy is to help us learn a moral lesson through the victory of good characters over the evil ones. On the other hand, Joseph Edison is known as a man of expression as he used the Augustan style of expression which is characterized by crisp and precise words. The unique style enabled him to give lessons of morality with an expression of humour that made it more acceptable while entertaining. This is why even his rivals like Alexander Pope have appreciated his clarity of expression as His conversation had something in it, more charming than I've found in any other man. And this is why Joseph Edison and Richard Steele together were referred to as the modern reformers of the Augustan age. Let us now begin with our next section which is the periodical essay number 124 written by Joseph Edison. The first question we must ask is what is the main topic of discussion in this essay? Through this essay, Edison is telling us how the periodical essays help to reform the society. For this objective, Edison provides the moral significance of the periodical essay by comparing the old tradition of writing with the new tradition of writing. To understand this better, we must first understand the motto of this essay, which is, A great book is a great evil. This motto has been taken from the work of a Greek poet, Callimachus. That brings us to our next question. So why is a great book a great evil? For the simple reason, it takes a lot of your time. So, why do readers complain about it? Well, there are two main reasons for it. Firstly, because of the large volume which includes a long introduction or a preamble that prepares the reader for the events that will occur. So to read a good book, you need to have a disciplined lifestyle. You really have to dedicate those hours and hours in reading the book carefully and with utmost concentration. Which is the reason why people were often intimidated from reading a great book, even though it had a lot of information, lot of knowledge in it. But somehow the length of that book, the volume of that book, would often make the readers think over and over again if they could ever finish a thick book in front of them. The second reason for complaint was the language used in the books, which was invariably very boring. 
There were many reasons why the language seemed boring. Some of the reasons that Edison has stated in the essay include the first is the emotionless expression because of which the language seemed to be very flat. It almost seemed the character has no energy, no vitality while he is expressing himself in the lines. One can relate this flat expression with the Bollywood retro movies where the hero and heroine would use a very same monotonous tone while expressing their feelings for each other. If the hero had to ask the heroine anything, he would say, Are you going to go there? Yes, I am going to go there. The second limitation has been described by Edison as trivial observation. These trivial observations are the irrelevant details that make the reader lose focus of the main theme of the story. The third limitation in the language was the use of beaten topics in the story. These beaten topics were the outdated information that would generate no curiosity for the reader. And the final limitation was the use of common thoughts, which assured that the writer lacked creativity in expressing himself in a different and unique manner. All these limitations were visible to the reader in a repeated fashion and in large proportions. This is the reason why Edison has classified the morality writers into two categories. The first in this classification includes the ordinary writers and the second include the essay writers. Where ordinary writers will include writers like John Milton from the Puritan age who have employed the Galenic method of writing. In the Galenic method, the writer provides a detailed explanation for his purpose of writing. Milton in his work Paradise Lost provides a detailed explanation about why Adam and Eve were asked to leave the Garden of Eden. Don't be surprised, but the answer for this question was provided in 12 books. And in this way, through the story of Genesis, Milton guides mankind towards the path of redemption. Can you imagine? Every year, the number of books increases on the shelf. Is there a solution to reduce this number? Of course there is. And that solution can be achieved with the help of the second category of morality writers, who are the essay writers. The essay writers employ the chemical method of writing. In the chemical method of writing, the message is given in a concise and precise manner. And this style of expression is as impactful as a few drops of water in a trot condition. This is the reason why Edison wrote in the middle style. Because middle style was an expression which was easy to understand. And it was also entertaining for the listener as it was characterized by wit and humor. With just a few words, he was able to make you laugh and also teach you something moralistic. Not only this, but Edison's periodical essays were also popular in the coffee houses as they provided instant information with less consumption of time. Do you know that the coffee houses in the 18th century were also called penny universities? Imagine, just for a penny, you could enjoy a cup of coffee accompanied with Edison's periodicals. That would be a source of knowledge and entertainment. And that's how, in so little time, you got so much information in those coffee houses. Now, let's move on to our next question. According to Edison, where is the brief style of writing used the most in the 18th century? This isn't surprising. 
but such crisp and entertaining language was used mostly by the councillors and statesmen for their political propaganda. So we can see that such crisp expression was only used for personal interest rather than social reform. And in the essay, Edison really feels that the social reform should address the behaviour of the society as it is vital for a society to have good sons, husbands and father rather than counsellors and statesmen. In this way, Edison is performing the role of a philosopher like the Greek philosopher Socrates by teaching the moral values at the social gatherings like coffee houses and tea tables. In fact, Edison has himself stated his purpose of reforming people in social gatherings in essay number 10 from The Spectator. It was said of Socrates that he brought philosophy down from heaven to inhabit among men. And I shall be ambitious to have it said of me that I have brought philosophy out of closets and libraries schools and colleges to dwell in clubs and assemblies, at tea tables and in coffee houses. Let's move on to our next question. What means of communication did the Greek philosophers lack in their times? Well, let's hear this answer from the Greek philosophers themselves. If only we had the modern technology of Printing, we could have reformed, enlightened and entertained the society and made them smarter and happier. Let's move on to our next question. Why has the biblical reference from Solomon's book of Proverbs been used in the essay? In this regard, Edison has created the imagery of a local marketplace where people from all walks of life can be found. Here, wisdom has been personified as a woman, walking through the streets and is asking humanity one question, which is, When will all of you change yourselves? Wisdom is concerned that the simple men are not turning wiser. She is also worried to see that the negativity in the human race is not being changed into positivity. Now, what is the irony for Edison in the essay? The irony is that the society does not appreciate Edison's effort, though the public has a demand for Edison's work. Moving on to the next question, which is, why has Edison given the reference of Virgil's work in Eid in this essay? The reference is mainly in context to the ignorant people who do not wish to learn. In the essay, Edison's through Virgil's tale is describing the story of the warriors who are afraid to fight in the broad daylight. They are more comfortable in the night as the darkness of the night hides their identity and so there is less danger in the night and fewer chances of defeat. Hence, just like the soldiers in Virgil's Aeneid, ignorant people also lack the strength and confidence to speak their mind in public and to learn from the moralistic essays of Edison. Let's have a look at the next question, which is, why has Edison used the fable of the mole in the essay? To understand why Edison has done so, I need to tell you the story of the mole where the mole has been used as a symbol of ignorance. Once upon a time, a baby mole was given a pair of spectacles by an eye specialist. He was running to his mother to show them. Mama, Mama, look what the eye specialist gave to me to see better. Human spectacles to read. To this, the mother mole replied, Oh, silly baby mole, 
We don't need human spectacles. We live in a hole. In this fable, we see that the moles are more comfortable to live in the darkness despite having a better option. Similarly, some men have souls that cannot be enlightened as they are happy to live in their world of darkness and ignorance. Edison has spoken about another category of moles called voluntary moles. Now, who are these voluntary moles? Here, Edison is referring to his jealous contemporaries who have nothing to appreciate or to say about his essays because they are constantly trying to criticize and find fault in his work. These voluntary moles have also been compared to the wolf through the proverb that one man is wolf to another. This phrase highlights the animal instincts in man, where the dominant and heartless nature of every man is compared to the nature of a wolf. As one author does not appreciate the creativity and the genius of another author. To end this negativity, Edison has decided to identify such vermins and comment on them. With this, we come to the end of this lecture. I hope the morals highlighted by Edison in his essays will have you to become a better human being. Do like and comment on the video if you feel the lecture was enriching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you are new to the channel. For after all, sharing is caring. This is me Karishma. Until we meet next time with a new lecture. Take care. Stay home. Stay safe.